So well, well, well. Here we go. There we go. Well, well, well. Here we are. There we go. Hello and welcome to the Autotonic version 1.11 update um, video. Autotonic version 1.11 of course is free to all existing users and in this video I want to talk a little about what's new and some of these new amazing techniques that have become available now. And the biggest keyword of this update is of course pivot key switching. So and here's a short forward to all music makers. Even if you are watching this video here and don't plan to use the new features or Autotonic itself. Um, I would really appreciate if you at least really understand what it, um, what this new feature is all about that I'm introducing here. And um, yeah, you can just watch the video and I don't want to waste any of your time. So I will get just um, to the point and uh, get to the most relevant part of it. So what is it this kind of key switching pivot key switching that I'm introducing here? Um, for many of you, let's start there. For many of you, the term pivot chords um, won't be unknown. It's a sub area of modulation that can be based on different pivots or uh, techniques or ways uh, of switching, for example, diatonically or enharmonically or chromatically or directly and so on. And however, there's always a matter um, of switching at a certain point in um, harmony and this certain key point or position is then uh, our pivot uh, reference point. So until now uh, in Autotonic we would have to use uh, the black keys for switching um, or changing modulation. So as it is with Autotonic we're playing on white keys only and we'll use the black keys as function toggles. Um, we would uh, have then had then to cho choose uh, or toggle a black key to uh, modulate. What this now? What this new technique, pivot key switching, will allow us to do now is to assign a certain white keys or a pattern or a, a, a sequence of pet of white keys as our function toggles. We can also call it shortcuts in this term, in this, um, at this point here. So think of them as shortcuts. You can assign your own shortcuts anywhere on the white keyboard layout to then um, toggle into another scale tonic um, pitch combination. So one of the most practical examples to demonstrate pivot key switching is probably by showing it um, through the melodic minor scale, which is differently played ascending than descending. So we play a different pattern ascending than descending. And when going to autotonic here, then um, we can see, for example, this would be the pattern for the ascending and this would be the pattern for the descending melodic minor scale. So melodic minor descending is uh, equals to the same as uh, Aeolian. And usually what we would have to do is to set up a first header and uh, select our melodic minor scale here. And then bend it for the uh, second header, uh, select our down our descending pattern. So we then could um, choose our first header play our ascending movement and then when down, playing downwards we would have to choose our uh, second header by toggling the black key to then be able to play the descending movement move movement so this ascending descending so um, what the new pivot key switching, which is this button here, by the way, so you can enable or disable it here with this button. What it will allow us to do now is to um, define certain keys by using Alt, so the main function button for using a pivot, um, the pivot key switching, it must be on, by the way, is using pressing down Alt. And while pressing Alt, I can assign, for example, this key. So with the Alt key here pressed, while pressing Alt down, I can learn this key to be the toggle then for this um, header. And the same for this header. 
I could hold down Alt and learn this white key to be the toggle then for this header. So they will instantly recall these headers then. And what we can do now is simply play on white keys and don't care about key switching anymore. So this was quite a simple example. It goes much deeper here. Um, something to add here that you will be able to use it better. By the way, there's a shortcut here when holding down Alt on my keyboard. And so I'm holding down Alt and then clicking this button here. Then it will reset the whole um, the patterns for each header. And you have to understand that each of these headers, so each of these uh, weirdly formed uh, shaped objects here is called a header. So each of these header can have assigned a sort of um, pattern, pivot pattern to it. These, these shortcuts we're talking of here, the, the pivot key switching, pivot sets. So um, for example, this header here um, has assigned this uh, pivot key and this header can have assigned uh, this pivot key. So whenever I press this, it will be toggling this header and pressing here will toggle this header. Um, so you can see each of these headers can have different patterns assigned. But as uh, pr mentioned previously, it's not only uh, single keys, you can assign even patterns or um, combinations or yeah, you, you see it like it's uh, a triad up here and a uh, root note down here. So only when really pressing this sort of, is it here and there, only when pressing now this certain combination, uh, which is quite widely spread here. So when pressing this combination, then this header will be toggled. So you can, if, if another header is selected and I'm, I'm pressing this certain combination, it will toggle this header. It won't toggle the header if I'm pressing only parts of the combination. It really has to match what I have assigned here as the pattern for the key switch. We can also reset a pattern uh, for a header by uh, again, holding down Alt on our keyboard and then uh, clicking the header itself. Then it will reset the whole set for this header. So each of these headers can have a pivot set and you can store uh, into these um, headers your desired or custom um, key switches. Um, which makes sense, of course, you can assign um, a certain key that use, is used twice so for example, this, this header uses um, the same key as the other header later. So we can intelligently or subsequently, subsequently um, program headers to be triggered at certain points. Afterwards, as said, subsequently or um, in static um, following movements, etc. And there are a lot of techniques opening here. Um, which I will eventually cover in a later video. But uh, something that I just wanted to cover today in this video as well is a new technique, which is incredibly cool. And um, you really have to follow me to understand it now, because um, it requires a little attention to the process behind it, but it is something incredibly new and you probably have never ever seen before anywhere else. Uh, let me show it to you. So let's, Take for example, we have two scales, two headers assigned here. So our two headers here, let's, let's uh, leave them as they are. And um, we, we will assign, for example, here this, um, this, this first header to this scale. By, by the way, we can also hold down Alt and use, of course, the um, keyboard buttons, the keyboard keys to learn or unlearn certain patterns, um, which makes sense. So it's not also only all mouse um, based or com user interface based. So you can really assign uh, learning uh, pivot patterns by using Alt here. So the technique I want to, uh, wanted to share. Let's take, for example, this first header uses this pattern and then um, let's use the second pattern um, uses this pattern, okay? So whenever we play uh, this triad, we're switching to the first header and whenever playing uh, this, the second pattern, it will toggle the second 
uh, pattern. Now there's a uh, difficulty here and maybe some have already noticed. Because um, when we use triads, for example, we will trigger three notes instantly. And um, autotonic or processing in general computers um, will first notice the signal and then process things. So it can't happen really at the same time. So you really have to give the processing, uh, even if it's a fracture of a moment, you have to give it a little of a moment to allow to, to switch into the new harmonic context. Understand? See the problem here? So the first, the first, the first toggled notes here, when actually um, the, the pattern is detected, so the first pressed uh, three notes are still in the old uh, scale. So when, when toggling now the, 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 the other scale, the first uh, played chord will be still in the remaining old uh, scale. Only on second trigger we uh, can play the new scale. And here comes a feature handy now that we already introduced in a previous version. We have a delay function which will delay only the white keys here. So whenever we set up a delay here and make it extreme examples here now, I will use 999 which stands for 999 milliseconds. So this will delay any signal on our white keys for 999 milliseconds. So this is a really extreme ex example now, um, which we of course won't be able to, which, which won't make much sense to use. But if we uh, lower, and by the way, you can also press Alt down on your computer keyboard here again, and then when clicking the delay uh, function here, it will reset to zero. But um, when we now set this delay function to only a very little, like 18 milliseconds or something, then we will give um, autotonic enough time to process the key switching before the actual white keys hits the processing. So um, let's, let me demonstrate it. And what I want to say before is now, I'm now in the first scale here, okay? And as soon as switching to the second scale, we will um, already have hit our free triad, our white key notes. And autotonic will already have, through the, because of the delay, autotonic will already have processed the, the header switching, even before processing the white key signals. So we will instantly have the new chord. So this is incredible. You really have to think through it. You can instantly switch into another uh, harmonic context without any uh, load time, basically no, not noticeable. This is like zero latency or near latency or how they told nowadays call it, but um, near zero latency or latency, almost latency free, whatever. Uh, it's unisonically, uh, but it does not. It does not feel it is, there is a latency, but you can instantly recall another scale by hitting a triad, and uh, that way really. Holy! But this is incredible, and you really, you guys have to really, really. I urge you to understand about this feature. It blows my mind still and uh, will open up so much incredible new workflows. So I think this is um, for our first video here. And thanks for watching and I will uh, cover new features uh, in later videos. Thanks and bye.